Hi, this is Tom from zerotofinals.com. In this video, I'm going to be going through pseudogout. And you can find written notes on this topic at zerotofinals.com slash pseudogout or in the rheumatology section of the second edition of the Zero to Finals Medicine book. And you can find flashcards and questions to train your knowledge and help you remember the information here longer at members. Dot zero to finals dot com. So let's jump straight in. Pseudogout is a crystal arthropathy caused by calcium pyrophosphate crystals collecting in the joints. It's formerly known as calcium pyrophosphate deposition disease or CPPD. It may also be called chondrocalcinosis. Let's talk about the presentation. The presentation of pseudogout varies. Many patients are asymptomatic and it's picked up incidentally on an x-ray. Others may present with chronic pain and stiffness in multiple joints. It can also present acutely with a rapid onset of symptoms. A typical acute presentation of pseudogout is a patient over the age of 65 with a rapid onset hot swollen, stiff and painful knee. Other commonly affected joints are the shoulders, hips and wrists. Let's talk about the diagnosis. In any patient presenting with a hot, painful and swollen joint, septic arthritis or infection in the joint must be excluded as this is a medical emergency. Symptoms of pseudogout tend to be milder than those of gout or septic arthritis. Joint aspiration is used to confirm the diagnosis. Aspirated joint fluid shows calcium pyrophosphate crystals. These are rhomboid shaped and positively birefringent of polarized light. There should be no bacterial growth. Chondrocalcinosis is the classic X-ray change in pseudogout. The calcium deposits in the joint cartilage show up as a thin white line in the middle of the joint space. Other joint X-ray changes are similar to osteoarthritis and these can be remembered with the loss mnemonic. L for loss of joint space, O for osteophytes, which are bone spurs, S for subarticular sclerosis, which is increased density of the bone along the joint line, and S for subchondral cysts, which are fluid filled holes in the bone. Finally, let's talk about management. Treatment of pseudogout is targeted at the symptoms. There are no proven disease modifying drugs prophylactic treatments or dietary modifications. Asymptomatic changes on an x-ray do not require any treatment. Acute symptoms usually resolve spontaneously over several weeks. Treatment options for acute symptoms include NSAIDs or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs such as naproxen, first line and this is often co-prescribed with a proton pump inhibitor such as omeprazole for gastroprotection to protect the stomach. Other options are colchicine, intraarticular steroid injections, however septic arthritis needs to be excluded before giving a steroid injection into the joint, and finally oral steroids. Now head over to members.zerotofinals.com to test yourself on how much you understood and remembered from this video. The member's site contains illustrated flashcards, multiple choice questions, and short answer questions designed to perfectly complement the Zero to Finals resources. It also features an Anki-like fact trainer tool, which you can use to train your knowledge on the key facts you need for your medical exams.
You test yourself on the fact, then rate how difficult you found that fact. The site then spaces out your repetitions and tells you when you're due to review it again. Going over the facts with space repetitions helps ensure they stay in your long-term memory. A link to the member site is in the video description.